Hi, it's uh, Joe Mazumed, our Exploration Insights at the uh, January 2022 virtual uh, webinar, uh, Metals Investor Forum. And with me uh, today, I have the CEO of Origin Royalties, Patty Nickel. Patty, how's it going? Good, Joe. Thanks for having me. How are you? No worries. Happy New Year. And uh, to you. We, uh, for those that uh, you know may not know, you know Origin Royalties, uh, you know uh, was a prospect generator, sort of converting to a royalty generator, and so the way you make deals, is, you know, probably let's say is, is a bit different. As and now mm -hmm. you want to pluck those royalties as soon as possible, and you know last year, you know you 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 were absorbing that acquisition of Renaissance Gold, which added the one percent silicon NSR. But you had already previously a 2% NSR on this Irma Tanya property. So that is a near term, if not now, uh, cash flowing uh, royalty for you. Can, can you give us a bit of background on, on that and the upside there uh, within, within the property uh, package you have? Sure. So, yes, you're right. Irma Tanya, um, uh, after you know, six years of from uh, the point at which we optioned the property and it was uh, the discovery on it, First Majestic has, has gone into production with that. And um, the, I guess the, the big point for us was early November where they poured their first uh, uh, gold bars, Dore gold bars. And so this is initial production and, and uh, it's the first point in our uh, company's life and as a prospect generated now as a royalty company where we're going to see our first cash flow and so that in itself I think is 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 very exciting it, it means that it's going to rely our reliance on the capital markets decreases from a, a GNA perspective um, but also opens up I think a lot of opportunity for uh, you know growth within the company so over the next seven years, um, we're going to see um, considerable production. I think the, the first seven years, we'll see about 12 and a quarter million U.S. dollars of cash flow. Um, and, uh, you know, that that is representing only 35 percent of the deposit. It um, and the royalty itself is, is, you know, beyond just the deposit. It's actually within 120 square kilometers. So expansion of existing resources, discovery of, of new zones under Metanio is is you know, very plausible. So we expect to see a long-lived royalty and it, it augments well into sort of a longer term approach that we've got with Silicon. Um, as you know, um, we have a 58 square kilometer land package that, that Angle Gold has been busy working on for the past uh, oh, four years now. Um, they've made a recent acquisition of the lands that surround Silicon. Um, and that was uh, the acquisition of Corvus Gold, which actually closed yesterday. Um, and the purchase, uh, the consideration there was $450 million. So, you know, with those two uh, royalties in mind, you know, we see a long, uh, you know, growth track for the company. We see increasing cash flow as time goes on. And I think that the valuation of both of those assets hasn't really sunk into our market yet. Um, and, you know, we, we see lots of upside as, as for the future. So if we go back to uh, uh, Irma Tanyo, I mean, Irma Tanyo is the property package, but um, like you were talking about, there's, there's room, like your valuation and your projected forecast cash flow are from, you know, from the 2% the, the, the NSR royalty yes. that you have is based on uh, the pre-feasibility study that, uh, that First Majestic put out about uh, about you know how that feeds their Santa Elena right. plant, mm -hmm. but uh, I think First Majestic is also talking about you know discovering new zones uh, yeah. in, within that uh, property package. Yeah. So the Rio Sonora Valley, just to give you a bit of a backdrop, you've got um, the Mercedes mine, which is now owned by Great Bear. You've got Las Chispas, uh, Bear which Creek, is a you know, Bear Creek. Oh, Bear. Oh, geez. <laughs> Bear Creek. Sorry, that it's changed That's hands. Right. Um, yeah. So so Mercedes is owned by Bear Creek. Um, the uh, uh, Santa Elena mine, which is owned obviously by First Majestic, Las Chispas, which is being developed by Silvercrest. And you've got this Rio Sonora Valley. It's, it's a fairly small valley, but a lot of competition. Now you've got Ermitaño. Uh, you've got this, this land package that surrounds Ermitaño where we have our royalty interest. And on top of that, we've got uh, a, a project called Kumobabi, which is a 1.5% NSR, which is probably adds another 300 and some odd square kilometers. So 400 square kilometers of royalty interest in this camp were, were really well set up for, for, you know, for many, many years to come. So I think, you know, that 
is a pipeline of royalty opportunities that will continue to add value over in the years to come. Yeah, and this is a pipeline of, of, of you know potential uh, exploration targets that, that there's a plant to feed it. Uh, exactly. To go into. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. No, it's all it's all fairly close together, and you've got the infrastructure that's that's more or less pre built to to support any any mining initiatives in the in the region. So if we move on to silicon, silicon is part of the 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 upside here, and and silicon has been sort of like there's been you know a lack of news flow since uh, Anglo took it over, and Renaissance yeah. agreement with them really doesn't impart a lot of disclosure on on their part to That's you. Right. But uh, you're thinking, and probably uh, I'm thinking, uh, is is that now that they've done this consolidation that you you commented it on with 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 Corvus, maybe they're in a better situation to now talk about what they have because uh, they've been drilling uh, that prospect a lot. A lot. Yeah, and, yeah, and so, so hopefully they so, won't talk about it. Yeah, so the history of, of the development of silicon has been somewhat muted from the standpoint that we've never seen a drill hole released on the project yet, despite the fact, I think as of up until the fall, they had drilled about 70,000 meters on the project in the surrounding area. And well, let's just this, remind people where silicon is. It's Walker yes. Lane. Bell, yeah, Walker uh, Lane District, southern part uh, of Nevada, and you're, yeah. you're right in sort of the heart of, of a whole lot of exploration activity in that camp so yes exactly low sulfidation epithermal target that was the original um you know uh thought process on on how to explore it and so obviously since then they, they've put seventy thousand meters no drill holes released they have been uh in very much of an acquisitive mood they bought the lands that surround us which was largely held by corvus gold for 450 million and so with that acquisition I, you know, Anglo has got to show the market there's a reason why they paid 450 million for Corvus, and um, they are slowly, but they are now coming out with information. They talk about silicon, Merlin, which is also within our royalty interests, um, along with the other assets, as being a potential tier one asset, which talks about sort of I think from a major company perspective, that's kind of half a million ounces a year for a 10 year period. So you can sort of I think get a sense of scale of what this could be. Um, they've talked about uh, silicon and Merlin as significant oxide ore bodies at depth, um, but no resources yet, and we expect to see that coming. Um, and you know, they they uh, talk about a production schedule that probably has the North Bullfrog, which is probably the most advanced deposit, uh, which is on Corvus's old ground, um, as being within development in the next three years, and that was disclosed yesterday um, in. Uh, Anglo Gold's public public uh, or their news release. So you know, silicon I suspect and and Merlin in the area will will be hot in the heels of the you know the initial part of the development. Um, and uh, so you know, there's a light on the horizon there with silicon. So we're pretty excited by what we see. And so I think this year will be the first year that that Anglo will be disclosing a whole lot more than they previously have on on silicon. So royalties right now, I mean, well, I was, we're seeing copper, I mean, sorry, um, operating cost escalation and that, that uh, people with exposure to precious metals might prefer the royalty companies as they, you know, would, would, would not have that exposure to, um, you know, shrinking margins. Mm -hmm. and, and you've got now two royalties, one cash flowing, both with producers in mm -hmm. decent geopolitical risk jurisdictions. Uh, that uh, you know, both the owners are, you know, are, are into developing and advancing. Um, and so, uh, and we've also seen on the background, you know, M and A in the royalty sector. We we saw yep. like before the end of last year a hostile bid, which is pretty rare right now, yep. uh, uh, for Elemental by by Gold Royalties, who which has been a fairly acquisitive company, and that's a reflection of what do you would would you say? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, the royalty space right now is 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 very hot. Um, royalties aren't easy to go out and buy, and I think the model that we're employing is generating projects based on our prospect generation business is is exactly the way to go. Um, you're right. Uh, the cost of capital and and just the scarcity of royalties means that the the industry or this portion of the industry has to consolidate, and so you're seeing it happen. In our situation, you're right. We've got two. Uh, I think brand new 
war royalties that, that are just getting started. Um, in some in some cases, haven't even started yet, but they're on their way. Responsible, capable producers, so it, premier mining jurisdictions as well. So we're set up well. And, and you know, I, I'd like to think, when I know this for a fact, is that we've got two fantastic, <clears throat> you know, major shareholders, one in Altius, um, and the other in Adrian Day Mass Asset Management. So, you know, collectively, we, we've got a good supportive group that allows us to do um, the business that we intend to do. But I also recognize the fact that, that there is interest, uh, I think, amongst all the royalty companies and in how this, this area, this segment of the market consolidates uh, will be interesting. But I think from our perspective, we're in an exceptionally good position, both from a shareholder perspective and from the assets that we currently have. So just to end it, uh, uh, what should a, uh, a, a potential investor or a current shareholder look for in the next six or 12 months coming from uh, origin? Well, the catalyst, I mean, obviously the, the, the development of Ermitanio and Silicon will continue on and, and we'll be able to talk to shareholders about that, especially as cash starts to come in. And I think you'll see some major developments in the progress of Silicon. So that's going to be key. Um, and I think, you know, on the other side of it too, we haven't talked about our prospect generation business. Um, we've got, uh, we had four drilling programs last year. Uh, we had about three and a half million dollars spent. We've got probably upwards of seven drilling programs coming in 2022. We have 12 active exploration partnerships on the go. So it's a very busy time for us. And so those, those joint venture agreements, if you call them that, um, those are the those are the pipeline, the treadmill, if you will, for future royalty growth and opportunities. So you're going to see a tremendous amount of news flow. Any one of those projects can lead to a discovery into a situation like we have both at Silicon and Ermitanio, which, uh, but we don't want to forget, they were organically generated royalties. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Patty. Uh, that's Patty Nickel, Origin okay. Royalties CEO. Uh, I'm Joe Mazumdar, Exploration Insights at the. Uh, January 2022 Metals Investment Forum. So thanks for joining us and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you. <laughs>